Our next story is from the Philippines. It's about their president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who also goes by the nickname Bong Bong. He became president about two years ago, in June 2022. He has more than four years left in his term. But already his popularity is tanking. A new opinion poll is out. It says that this year Marcos Jr.'s, Jr.'s approval rating fell by 13%. It's down from 68 to 55. Still over the halfway mark. Much better than the ratings for U.S. President Joe Biden. Biden was hovering around 37% last month, but that's not really a benchmark, is it? So Bong Bong is in a bind. He has to govern for four more years, and he needs people behind him. So he has to shore up his approval ratings. How does he do that? Well, there are two ways. Fixing domestic issues and smart foreign policy moves. The challenge for Marcos Jr. is domestic. His approval ratings have fallen for multiple reasons. He has failed to reduce inflation. The cost of living is still soaring. He would promised one kilo of rice at 20 pesos. That's 35 cents in USD for one kg of rice. But he's failed to deliver so far. So the people of Philippines are upset, and that part is fair. But, but it's not his only problem. Marcos Jr.'s predecessor has been acting up, turning people against the current president. Listen to this. When I was the mayor, the Drug Enforcement Office showed me a list. Your name was there. But I don't want to expose you because you are a friend. We know each other. But you started. You entered into a conflict. Mr. President, you might follow the fate of your father. And what I was afraid of, it will divide the nation. It will be a bloody time. For those of you who may have forgotten, that is Rodrigo Duterte, the former president of the Philippines, the predecessor of Marcos Jr. and a friend turned foe. Duterte and Marcos Jr. were allies during the last election. Duterte's daughter, Sarah, is the current vice president. Yet, that was him calling Bong Bong a drug addict. And I should clarify, that's not why he got his nickname Bong Bong. But Duterte was doing his best to undermine the president. And it has worked. The biggest hit to Marcos, Marcos Jr.'s approval was in Mindanao. It's the big southern island in the Philippines and Duterte's home turf. Marcos Jr.'s approval rating fell by 22% in Mindanao. So he needs to do something fast or risk getting undermined by a supposed ally. And that is where foreign policy comes in. Next week, the president is going to Washington for a trilateral summit. It will be the US, the Philippines, and Japan. And what do you think they will talk about? China, of course. China is a pain for all these three countries, and no one is bearing the brunt like the Philippines. Every other week, you see videos like this, the Chinese Coast Guard attacking Philippine vessels. Beijing is trying to bully them, forcing them to retreat from disputed islands in the South China Sea, and then lecturing them to boot. The Rene Reef is part of China's Nansha Islands and is Chinese territory. The nature of the Rene Reef issue is that the Philippines attempts to invade and occupy China's territory. The current tense maritime situation is caused by the Philippines' constant provocations and the responsibility lies entirely with the Philippines. He's talking about the disputed second Thomas Shoal in the contested Spratly Islands. But you know China and its enthusiasm for renaming things. The islands are claimed by both countries. But instead of dialogue, China resorts to strong-arm tactics. This is a hot-button issue for the people of the Philippines that are tired of Beijing's bullying, so a president who stands up to China may get public approval. Marcos Jr. is trying to be that president. He hosted the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, just a few weeks ago. He is visiting Washington next week. The message is clear. Marcos Jr. hopes the U.S. can help him thwart China. Beijing's bullying will be stopped by a bigger bully. And Marcos Jr. hopes this strategy will help him domestically as well. Reports say he's planning to upgrade military base, a military base in Mindanao, the southern island, and make it fit for joint operations with the U.S. That may help him one-up Duterte on his home turf as well, hitting two birds with one stone, securing domestic support and the South China Sea. Or perhaps we should say the West Philippine Sea. <laughs> 